All right. Good morning. How's everybody doing today? I'm just going to do a quick refresher to make sure everything is showing up um, on your guys' end. There we go. So this is Paint with Lovejoy, and this is our daily demo. I think we're approaching uh, two months of doing this, so lots and lots of fun developing a nice community. Um, so we'll be painting along. We're doing a Whippet Puppy this morning, and this is a viewer request. So if you have anything that you'd like me to paint in the future, please leave a comment in the chat um, or uh, in the comments below, and I'll add it to the list. And all right, so let's see a little bit of what you're looking at. Um, we've got our colors for today. I am on an eight by 10 panel. Um, so it's flat compared to a stretched canvas. And I do have my design already on here. And for the design, you've got two options. You can pause the video, draw what you see, or if that's a little too much for right now, um, there's a link in the description box below. You can jump to my website, purchase the traceable, you download it, print it, and then with carbon paper, you can transfer it to your canvas and then pick up the video at the painting portion. And with the traceable, it's just kind of a nice way for my beginner painters to um, get their composition on their canvas so they can focus more on painting rather than drawing. Um, but I do have some videos on the YouTube channel on how to draw what you see and a few different little art hacks, so check that out. All right, and actually, um, I forgot I was gonna use the knife today for the background. So we'll be using brushwork for our, it's gonna be a dark gray whippet. He's got a little bit of a white chest and then some pretty brown eyes. And then we're gonna go teal on the background and I am gonna to go to the knife just cause I haven't used it in a while. Um, and it's a nice, just different texture to the background. So let's see. Oh, awesome, awesome. We've got quite a few people jumping on. Hi, Mike. Hi, Sonia. Hi, Lauren. And Denise, awesome, awesome. So thank you guys so much for jumping on and hanging out and making this community awesome and fun. So uh, like I said, if you have any questions or need me to explain anything, just let me know. And I try to look over at the chat every um, five or 10 minutes or so just to see if there's something that you guys need. Uh, but I also love that you guys are just talking amongst yourselves. So that is awesome. All right, so I'm gonna start with a me uh, medium to light teal. So you saw that I grabbed a little touch of the teal, mixed it with the white and using the knife. And for the knife, you've got a couple of shapes. This is gonna be the main kind of traditional knife. And you've got this long edge and then a little bit shorter one. And this is my favorite shape of knife. But because I'm on the smaller canvas, I'm just using a different shaped knife. So the way that I apply the paint is very untraditional palette knife. I do like to put my finger right there for extra support. And we do this scraping method. And for anything that has overwhelmed you, stressed you out, brought you anxiety in the past couple of days, this particular application of applying your paint with the knife is extremely therapeutic. So if you have anything that you're feeling, you literally just scrape it into here and it's just nice to push against the canvas or the panel and scrape away your, scrape away your feelings. <laughs> So, but it is, it's just nice. And uh, because of this particular application style, this is traditional of what I do for my professional work. Um, and it has definitely allowed me to deal with my stress in a very healthy way. Because an artist lifestyle is not all sun and roses and there's stress and you gotta figure out how to deal with it. So this has been very therapeutic with me. Um, so I'm hoping it can do the same for you. All right, and as you're doing this, um, feel free to uh, rotate your canvas, change the direction. I keep it in kind of the same orientation just because I am filming the video for you guys. Um, but if you need to turn your canvas sideways, adjust anything in the creative world to what you need for your process. And should you paint anything on the inside of your composition, on the inside of your dog, don't stress, acrylic paint dries very nicely and you just paint right on top of it again. And with any of my videos on my YouTube channel, you are more than welcome to use any tools. You do not have to just use paint. You can use crayons, markers, colored pencils, watercolors. Um, it's more just get creative, do something with this abundance of time that we have all been 
uh, had to deal with. So at least fill it with some creative outlets. All right. Ooh, I just saw 76 in Wyoming. Nice. Very nice. Nice and comfortable, too. Awesome. Awesome. All right. We are going to scrape a few other darker colors on top of this and some lighter. Again, it's just nice to have a daily painting, um, a creative outlet on a regular basis. So these 11 o'clock painting sessions have been helping me immensely. All right. Oh, and chocolate chip cookies sound awesome. Those are one of my favorites. Chocolate chip cookies and brownies. <laughs> That's my weakness. Awesome. All right. Let's see. Knife work. Just checking to see if there's any other questions. All right. Looks like we're good. All right. Oh, um, nope. I think that was talking too much to you guys. All right. Cool. Cool. Um, oh, here's a question. All right. Do I scrape off most of the paint or leave it only in sections? All right. Um, so that could kind of be a dual answer. And again, it kind of comes down to personal choice. I like more of the pushing and the scraping to where you're almost putting on paper thin layers. And in my work on my portfolio, it has about a hundred layers of paint scraped on it where today we'll get to maybe two or three layers. Um, so if you can scrape more layers on, it's just, I feel like I'm sculpting with paint um, and it feels more of a 3D process rather than having an idea and moving straight forward. Traditional palette knife, you would leave thicker paint on there and um, kind of like icing a cake, you manipulate it on top. And I would say in the last probably three or four years, I've been combining both of the techniques to where most of my career I've stuck with more of this style layering. So what I've been doing is kind of this scraping method in the background. Um, and I've got an elephant painting I did it with. So the background got scraped and then the elephant got scraped and he had way more layers on it. And then the grass that was in front, I did that very impasto style and super thick and used heavy body paint. And it just made a, a really just nice depth and contrast. So try both and it, maybe it's specific for what you want to accomplish. Maybe it's specific for a look that you want to go for. Um, but yeah, you can, you can interchange them and mix them up. All right. So again, I've actually just grabbed the direct teal, um, and just in a few random areas, just scraping it right on there. Don't worry about it going in any particular direction. We're just getting some nice texture, um, and some different colors on our canvas. And if you prefer to do a different color for your background, feel free to do that. So now we'll do the same thing with white, scrape it on there. And it's kind of nice when you do the, the layers on top because you can see some of the colors underneath. And when I first developed this style, I'd actually let all this dry and then put another layer on top of it and then let it all dry and then put another layer on top. Because when each layer is dry in between, the new layer is going to act independently compared to right now with both layers being wet, they're going to interact with each other and mix. So there's so many variables in art and the way that you can choose to do stuff so uh, just experiment go what's this going to do um, in an odd sense artists are kind of like scientists because they go what's this going to do let's try this um, they kind of set, state a hypothesis and then they execute it to see if it's going to be successful or not all right Okay, so I think that's pretty good for the background. Um, I will move into brushwork for the dog. And he's pretty dark gray, like I said, with some kind of red, uh, reddish brown eyes and a few little spots of, on his white chest. So I will be using the middle size brush. We're not going to start with black. We're going to start with dark gray and then we're just going to work our way backwards until we get to the white patches um, on his little chest. So starting with our brush, I'm going to pull, I'm actually going to do it a little bit backwards. I'm going to pull some black aside and then I'm going to grab a little chunk of white to mix in with that to get to the dark gray. Normally, I usually start with white first and add the darker color, but today we're just doing it a little bit different. All right, so going for a dark gray and we're literally just going to be making little dots today. This is a short haired little dog and um, 
we're just going to overlap our dots to kind of create his fur. And let's see, we're starting in the dark shadows first. Those ears are usually the darkest. And if you're painting at home, just kind of notice the shape that I'm placed, uh, the placement of where I put each color and the shape that they're making. And just do the best of your ability to mimic that at home. It does not have to be exact of what I'm painting. You are uh, training your eye-hand coordination and your brain is taking in new observational concepts or just interpretations. So be kind to yourself. We all interpret things differently. We all understand things differently. And that's why there's really no right or wrong way to paint it. And you're just finding your version, your interpretation. All right, so while I have that dark gray right now, there is a little touch of pink inside the ears. So like I said, since I've got it made right now, I'm gonna put a little bit of this over here, grab a tiny amount of red. And again, a little bit of red goes a long way. I'm actually gonna do more. There we go. We're gonna put that on the inside. And it may not be super obvious at home, um, but just knowing that there's a little tint of the red in there um, just gives us a slight uh, color change. And once we get the rest of this filled in, uh, that'll look kind of nice. So, And if yours happens to be a little more pinkish than mine, that's okay. All right. Oh, I see some questions popping up or at least some more things happening. Um, <laughs> yes, cookies are always awesome. Um, let's see, so Denise is asking, the style that I've developed adding layers of paint using the scrape scraping method for depth and texture. Yes, that is correct. Um, I really like all the different texture that this comes in. And when each of these layers dry, there's like a little paint ridge right here. So when that dries and then I put the next layer on and it scrapes over it, it creates this kind of just random texture that you couldn't plan for. So that's why in some of the other demos with those repurposed canvases, um, those are really good for my, my style knife painting because it's already coming with the texture and I can jump right in instead of having to build five to 10 layers to get to that texture. Um, the old sheet particle board that had all the texture on it. I actually used to love starting with that and painting because of the texture. Um, for the depth portion, that comes more with kind of color choices to make this illusion on the flat surface. Um, but by having a bit more of the thin layer scraping and then super solid higher contrast in the foreground for those blades of grass on that elephant painting, um, it just pulls it gives you that illusion that it's pulling it more forward because it's a little more solid. So I'm sure you will have fun playing with that in your artwork too. So, okay, so let's see, we're going medium or a little bit lighter on our gray. So I'm actually just gonna keep with this pile. I'm gonna make a little bit more of that dark gray and then I'm gonna add more white and then we're just basically gonna kind of step down for that. So just keeping that white right here, making kind of a new pile so you can kind of pull some of the darker into it. Yeah, this isn't a crazy dark gray whipped little puppy. All right, and as you're working with your shades, sometimes you may make a color here and you go, oh, perfect color. And then when you apply it here, you go, it's actually too light. So go back and adjust. Um, it's totally okay to change your color here after you've applied some on your canvas. So I am actually going closer to the darker gray right now. Um, and the reason that happens is it's uh, something that we call color theory. We interpret our color based on the color right next to it. So um, when we look at it here, we're looking at it against the white palette. We're looking at it against the other plates, uh, the other colors on the plate. And then when we look at it on here, as we place it next to another color, our interpretation of that color changes. So again, that's why nothing in art is set in stone. And it has more to do about your personal development with being an artist and being creative rather than being perfect or photorealistic or any of the things that you're trying to achieve. I think in this state of the world, um, having a creative outlet for our mental capacity um, is super important and we don't give it a whole, enough credit in life. 
and I'm hoping that we're able to reflect during this time and realize that we need to bring in more creativity in our daily life. We're all way too stressed out. So, except for all you guys watching right now, you're being creative, so you're handling your stress, you're finding your outlets, and that's what it's about. So I'm proud of you guys. All right. So again, just kind of going with our darker spaces, working backwards. And as we apply this, totally okay if you overlap one of your prior colors. Um, at the end, we might go back in with a few other colors and just touch up some areas. But we're getting to what we call the underpainting, um, where we filled in all the canvas space. And it does look different once we get to that point of filling in all the canvas space. Um, that's a little bit lighter. Okay. Oh, the nose. I knew there was one other spot I was forgetting. All right, so on that nose, we're just going to fill in that whole area, and then we will put a highlight on top of this in our next couple of steps. And um, just a side note, I tend to use the same brush and just get stuck in that. So if I'm using a brush and you need to use a smaller or bigger one, please um, adjust for what you need or the tools that you have on hand. Awesome. Oh, good. I'm glad that that explanation made sense. Good. All right. So now from here, that color that I made a minute ago is more appropriate. So we're going to be making, adding more white and getting back to that first color before I changed it. There we go. Perfect. And we'll fill a good portion of our, the rest of our dog in with this color. And as you come up next to your other colors, if they're still wet, um, just do a little bit of your blending, either the back and forth um, motion or the little stabbing. But if your paint is still wet, it's a great time that you can still do your blending. If you are painting on a bit of the slower side, totally okay. And if your paint's already dry, just bring your color right up next to it and that's it. And that's just part of how your style is going to look for today's painting. Um, you could paint the same painting every day and it'll be slightly different because you're a different person, a different emotional content every day, each new day. And as you're doing this, if you have to mix this light gray or medium gray two or three times and it's slightly darker, lighter each time, that's okay. We're basically working with a dog in shades of gray. So a little diversity is not going to ruin your painting. It will actually help enhance it. And oh, most important thing, make sure you take a big inhale right now, breathe and relax. We're all just hanging out in this creative world. Let's get this side of the body. I'm going to be moving into a little bit lighter. And this one, I am going right up to those uh, pencil lines or the black Sharpie markers. I probably will not do the pop art outline on this, um, but it does look really cool should you choose to do that on yours. And it, the pop art outline will just be doing a black outline that overlaps the background a little bit and overlaps your subject matter. It, the pop art line does kind of help clean up your image just a little bit, and it just gives it a bit more of that bold kind of cartoony feel. Right. Oh, let's get one more spot. All right. So now we're going to move down one more shade lighter. And again, we're just going to add more white to this mixture. But if you do have to make your shade again from scratch, that's okay. Your brain is learning a lot each time you have to mix your color. And let's go a little bit lighter than that. There we go. And some of this color I will be dabbing and dotting on top of the other one. Yeah. Okay. 
and oh, let's do a little down here and then I'm going to move over to the smaller brush. And remember as you're painting to get out of your chair, walk to the edge of the room, look at your painting from a distance of five to 10 feet away and just notice what it looks like from that distance. And as you go back to your canvas, maybe you need to adjust something that you noticed from that distance, go ahead and make that adjustment. Um, when we look at it from the distance, that's the same thing. Uh, that's more the normal viewing distance. So learning to look at your artwork from the vantage point that most people will experience your artwork and adjust based on what's needed is also part of the creative process. So start getting into that habit um, early on. And usually we like what we see from that distance better than what we see two feet in front of our face while we're creating our painting. So don't be upset if you like your painting more from that distance. So just kind of adding these highlights on top of some of the other shades of gray uh, before I move down into a few lighter colors. And then we'll go back with a few. I'm going to make this part a little bit darker um, and then we're going to put some details on top of the nose. But if anybody is interested in checking out my most popular class of all time, it's been my most popular class for the last seven years. Um, I taught a paint your pet class in my studio, super, super fun, but you learn to paint from your own photograph and you learn to look at the value scale, the dark, medium and light shades of your own pet. And when you paint something that you care about, you actually put a lot more energy into it and you are more successful with it. So my Paint Your Pet, I've got a 30-day self-paced course on my website, and I do have kits available to where you send me your photo, I'll prep your photo, and then send you personalized paint and colors based on your photograph. But given that we do have this opportunity to get creative and kind of do some things that we haven't normally done in our life, give that a try. Think about it. and check out the pictures of the other people that have painted their pets. Because most people, when they watch me paint, they're like, oh, I can't paint my pet. But when you go and look at the pictures and see all the students that have painted their pet and felt the same way you felt about being scared to paint or you love your pet and you just want to do it justice, um, look at their pictures and hopefully they'll give you some confidence to give the course a try. All right, so with this light gray, we've got a little tuft of white hair here. So we're going to put some light gray shadows and then we'll come in with some pure white. And then we're going to go back and kind of clean up that area on that face. I'm not liking that. All right. Um, yeah, so I think we're good to fill in the rest of the space with white. Super exciting to put white paint on a white canvas. And again, when you come up next to that light gray, just do a little bit of your blending and soften that line. Nice. Mm, um, so you're asking what the trick is to make the eyes realistic. Um, it really comes down to what's already on here. Um, because we have that pure white catch light and then you've got that black pupil, we're gonna put, let's actually go ahead and do that right now. We're gonna take that burnt sienna. I'm gonna go a little bit darker. So I'm gonna add a touch of black to it. So still staying in the brown range, but just making it a little bit darker. So I'm gonna fill in the eye color, but the reason the eyes get that realistic look is it's that pure white catch light like I was talking about and then that pure black pupil right next to it. And it's something that we call high contrast, that pure white next to that pure black. Um, our eyes are immediately drawn to high contrast. Um, so when we see that on a small scale in the eyes, it our eyes immediately go there um, as the viewer. 
So sorry, I was concentrating. I didn't want to go out of the line. <laughs> um, and we're all naturally drawn to high contrast. And it just, it, it, that white pops forward and then that black immediately pushes back. And that's part of that a magical illusion um, that we create here on a flat surface. So if you start getting into more painting and painting animals or humans, um, you'll get more into the various shades in the eyeball. Um, the catch light's gonna be called call what we call the, the main highlight. And then you have what we call residual highlights. I don't go into that into the class just because I mainly teach first time painters. Um, but residual highlights would be help support that main highlight and help give that illusion of that 3D object or um, the, the life of the eyes on this flat surface. Okay, so I'm actually gonna go ahead and take black and I'm gonna go ahead and outline, reapply that pupil so that way I have the pure black because that original black was from the Sharpie marker. And I'm gonna do a mistake intentionally just so we can see the contrast. So as I take away, I'm gonna fill in that pupil again and I'm gonna go over that white catch light and just take a, a quick mental note of what it looks like right now. And then as I get rid of that white highlight, how different it looks. So I literally just took away the contrast and now it looks like a zombie or a deer in the headlights and we're still more drawn to this eyeball because of that pure white and that pure black. So I'm gonna go ahead and just paint over this one. We will reapply it um, and again, that way your eye can just kind of see what the difference looks like in that pop effect. So that white dot makes a huge pop effect. So while I've got the black on here, I'm gonna go in and get just little nostrils on the nose. And they are actually just super tiny given the angle. I'm gonna go ahead and actually just outline that nose really quickly. And same with the nose, we are gonna put a little highlight on there. And it's amazing how much that little highlight gives that illusion of depth and form. All right, so I actually wanna go back to the dark gray. I wanna to tone down that area. So I'm gonna keep with the pointy brush. We're doing our dark gray. That was one of the first colors that we made. And I'm just gonna reapply right on top of what I painted earlier. And this is one of those things that if you end up painting something in the wrong area, or maybe like I did, I got the color way too light. Um, you just go back and reapply. And it's easier to see that sometimes once you've gotten to what we call the underpainting, where there's no canvas space left, because that canvas, that white canvas, just like we were talking about with the catch light, affects your interpretation. So once we can get to this point of the underpainting, you're going to see your colors differently. So it's okay that once you get here that you go, oh, I need darker here, I need lighter here. You constantly want to readjust and adapt to where your painting is at that current moment. Not where it was when we started, not where it was five minutes ago, but where it is right now as you're adding the new layer on. So painting is a conversation between you and the canvas. Um, don't fight the canvas too much because it generally always wins but you're just learning to kind of do this back and forth. You add a color, does it work? Does it not work? Does it need to be adjusted? And then you just kind of keep chiseling away in that manner. All right, so I'm gonna make this a, go back to that medium gray. So just adding more white to my dark gray. Smooth out his cheek, there we go. There we go, much better. I made that way too light. And again, I'm actually just applying like these little tiny dots. I'm not, you know, um, smushing it around or doing anything special, just a bunch of little dots. And then same, if you have to mix your shade a second or third time don't stress about exact color matching. All right. 
left. And again, just kind of filling in a few of those spaces. I'm gonna go a little bit lighter for a few of those highlights I just painted over. And then we're gonna get a highlight on the nose. Oops, and I got another drop of water. So if that happens to you and you get that little drop of water on there, do need to wipe it off because that water immediately takes it right back to the canvas. Um, and if you had had quite a few layers on there, it's gonna be very frustrating. So if that happens, you have to go back and make that color. And that was the light color. And you have to apply it a little bit thick. So you gotta, there we go. So sometimes when that happens on my other paintings, I've got a few layers, so I've gotta put a little bit thicker paint in there. But like I said, you can always fix stuff with acrylic paint. There we go. Just adding a few of those little highlights back since I added that dark space in there again. And let's see, let's go even lighter gray. Put a few more highlights on and I'm working my way back to white and then we'll put that white dot in the um, pupil again. All right, and then this with this highlight, right above those little nostril spots, we're just gonna put a little line All right, I'm gonna take a look up at it in the phone. Oh, it is coming together nicely. Okay, kind of choppy, not too bad. Whoops, going back to that dark gray, didn't mean to put that there. All right, so I'm gonna clean the brush. I'm gonna do black eyeliner around the eyes again, and then I'm gonna put that white little catch light. So on the eyes, if you can redo the eyeliner um, after you've got the eyeballs in there and everything, it just kind of helps set those eyeballs back in the eye socket. And again, with the eyeliner, it gives us, kind of cleans it up and gives our eye something clean um, to focus on and also the high contrast when we do the catch light. So as you're doing these skinny, tiny lines, remember to breathe, treat your brush kind of like a pencil and use just the tip of it. And this is a skill that gets easier with more practice. So just know that you're still having practice and you're doing good all right whoops i don't need to do that yet take that little extra off all right so we're going to do this catch light and basically it doesn't really the exact placement of your catch light isn't the most important factor what's important is that you put the catch light in the same spot on both eyes so you don't have a cross-eyed looking dog so if you're thinking about it as like the face of the clock i'm going to put my dot at 11 o'clock on both eyes and I am going to make sure that it's going to overlap and be on that black. So again, just adding that little dot kind of brought it to life. And again, it goes back to that high contrast between the pure black and the pure white. Awesome. Awesome. All right. And he's got a little super white chin. So I'm just using that pure white to highlight this a little bit more. And this is that same effect by having the lighter here that's pulling the chin forward and pushing the details on the neck back a little bit. All right, so going back to my light gray, I'm just adding a few little, smoothing that out, that little chin. And, hmm. Yeah, say so your call if you wanna do any, the pop art highlights or anything. Um, and no matter what you do, please send me a picture of what you guys paint. Email those, paintwithlovejoy at gmail.com or tag me in social media. Um, if you want to make this a brown with it, just switch out the shades of gray for your shades of brown. Or if you even wanted to do a blue dog, switch it out with your shades of blue. But feel free to get creative and just switch this up and have fun. Um, tomorrow's painting and I believe the next four traceables are on my website um, so you can just check the link down in the description box and you can see the composition of what we'll be painting in the next couple of days and like I said earlier if you've got something you want me to paint send me an email leave a comment in the chat or in the comment section below and I'll add it to the list but these are good good things good prompts for me to paint some of them are things that I would never paint. Um, and then some of them are things that I thoroughly enjoy painting. So 
it's good to just kind of keep good practice for me. Um, yeah. Ooh, make sure you like and subscribe to the channel, like the video, and feel free to check out my online school, keep painting, email me your photos, and yeah. Let's see. Oh, um, I'm glad it's building up your confidence. Excellent, excellent. Uh, for the Van Gogh, oh, the ginger cat for the Van Gogh self-portrait. I think I know which one you're talking about. Um, I will film that because I do want to do some more Van Gogh tutorials. Probably won't do that for a demo for here, but I'll film it and then I'll release it as one of my um, weekly videos to where I'll have the words and a better narration and, you know, some parts might be time-lapsed. But I'll put that on the list for that production. So good suggestion. And Van Gogh is super popular, so... Um, I should be releasing some George O'Keefe videos in the next couple of weeks, and that's going to be um, more beginner level, and it's going to get you comfortable with doing some wet on wet blending in small sections. Um, so I'm just now finishing the narrations for those. So, all right. Well, I hope everybody has a great day. Thank you so much for showing up and hanging out and interacting with me. I love it. And happy painting, and I'll see you guys tomorrow. Cheers.